Hello, I'm Nelson Davis, executive producer of Making It. One of the problems faced by all entrepreneurs is financing. Where do you get startup capital or the line of credit to keep an existing business going? Well, you know, classically, aspiring business owners use their own savings or refinance their homes. Others manage to tap their friends and relatives. But at some point, we all turn to one of the oldest institutions, a bank. When you think about it, local lending institutions have a vested interest in helping keep their communities economically strong. You see, they prosper only if you do well. So join us today as we explore the relationships between a bank, a small business, and a community organization. Making It, featuring inspiring personal stories of struggle, triumph, and success from America's small business communities. And welcome to Making It. I'm Lynette Romero. And I'm Emmett Miller. One of the last male-dominated businesses in this country is the construction industry. And if you're still wondering if it's tough to be a woman and succeed in the construction industry, just ask our next entrepreneur, Tammy Volley Martin. She's the senior vice president of Deb Construction. They're general contractors located in Southern California. DEB, which stands for Designers, Engineers, and Builders, was started by Tammy's father more than three decades ago. He was worried about how his daughter would fare in a traditional man's world. But Tammy grew up in the business, and she always knew it would be her future. DEB Construction was started in 1976 by Jakub Jake Valley. DEB stands for Design, Engineering, and Builders, and it's the building process that Jake fell in love with. He started an engineering company and just loved the construction part of it. So he kept the engineering company for a while and then, um, and then went into construction and developed some very good clients pretty much from the start. And just he has always nurtured his clients. He made a profit the first year and he's never lost money since. One of his first biggest clients, he picked a man that he got to know somehow and badgered him until he gave him a project and proved that he could do it. And that was probably in 1978, and we're still with that client. Tammy Martin grew up surrounded by construction, but transitioning into the family business was not easy. He didn't want me to get involved in construction. Um, he, he felt it was a man's world, and it was, and it is. Um, it's, it's sometimes tough to be a woman out there, but uh, I was just interested in it, and I, I went against what he said, and I did it. <laughs> Jake Volley retired, and today, Deb Construction is run by the brother and sister team, Adam Volley and Tammy Martin. My brother and I share responsibilities of Deb Construction. Um, I think we have a, a very good relationship. He, he generally runs the, the field. He runs the jobs. He, he, does, he helps the project managers with their bids, and... Um, follows it all the way through to completion uh, in the field. I run the office. I, uh, I do the financial part of it. I, I manage the people in the office. Securing a project can be a challenge, but completing the project can be equally challenging. Once we're awarded a job, and a, a, a sticking point a lot of times is the permit process with the cities, but if, we're, if the permit is ready and we can start, we need, we need about three weeks a month before we can start, actually start construction. And then we need about 90 to 120 days to finish a project on a normal schedule. We've been asked a lot of times to do an accelerated schedule and that's where we double up our crews or, or work maybe 12 hour days or 14 hour days. You can finish it in 90 days. Deb Construction believes in customer service. Their relationship with Comerica is based on this philosophy. Comerica came to us and we, we did the Pasadena job and we did a good job. Um, they were very happy with our construction, our service that we gave them. At that same time, they, we bid, I believe, two other Comericas and they awarded each Comerica to a different subcontractor. Um, out of those jobs, I believe they were very, very happy with us. And it, it just came to pass that 
we were asked to go in and help complete some of the other Co-Americas that were lagging. We just proved ourselves every time we finished it and, and, and did a good job. We've met uh, quite a few of the Co-America project managers and they've gotten to know us. Uh, we have a good rapport with them and they will call us and say, we've got a job coming up for bid. Uh, expect the drawings within a month. And once we're awarded the job, uh, Co-America will call us and let us know. A booming business is always a good thing, but as business grows, so must its infrastructure. In the last couple of years, we've had a big growth spurt. Um, we have managed it by adding a lot of, of new project managers and superintendents. Uh, we've tried hard to find good people. We've also really upped our, our communication with computers and digital cameras. They can email uh, pictures so that the client can see what's going on without having to come out. Adam and Tammy have some definite plans for the future. I think in the future we've been fortunate and again the word of mouth has, has led us to other clients. If we can find the right employees, we can continue expanding and we can go outside of financial institutions. Uh, we've been asked to do other restaurants, um, we've been asked to do different office buildings and uh, there's an opportuni opportunity for us to expand. We just need to get our infrastructure stronger and I think we can go far. They're already ahead of the curve. Deb Construction estimates this year's sales will top $35 million. Wow, they currently have about 50 employees divided between their northern and southern California offices. And Deb Construction has a lot of experience hiring subcontractors, but in today's world, it's not just construction companies that need subs. If you need to hire them, do you know what to look for? Cheryl Mann, president of New Venture Consulting, has some tips in our Secrets of Success. Today, I will talk about how to hire a subcontractor. Now, a subcontractor, sometimes referred to as a sub, can be a company or an individual that you hire to perform a specific task or function on a major project. Your first step, ask yourself two questions. Number one, what complement will the subcontractor add to your business? Number two, what value add does a subcontractor bring to the table? After answering these two questions, your next step, research, both offline and online. Ask your peers for subcontractor referrals, and then visit the websites of those referrals to get a basic understanding of what the subcontractor does. If you're happy with what you've read thus far, get prepared for your next important step. Write a contract for signature. Be very specific about measurements, milestones, and deliverables of the subcontractor. Know exactly what you'll get once the contract is completed. And there you have it, three basic steps for hiring a subcontractor. Good luck. And you can reach Cheryl Mann, president of New Venture Consulting, at 323-549-0995. And you can watch streaming video of more secrets of success on our website at makingitv.com. And coming up next, he has four degrees from UC Berkeley, plus a master's in business from Pepperdine University, and a master's in divinity from Claremont College. Can you believe that? Meet the Reverend Dr. Clyde Odin, Jr. and hear about his latest business mission when we return. In the spirit of small business, making it is being brought to you by Comerica Bank. We listen, we understand, we make it work. Southern California Edison, for over 100 years, life powered by Edison. And by Honda, the power of dreams. And we thank you for your patronage. Welcome back to Making It. Today we're talking about banks 
their relationships with small business, and the communities they serve. Reverend Dr. Clyde Odin Jr. is the senior pastor of the Bryant Temple AME Church in Los Angeles. He has a strong background in business operations. For Bryant Temple, Dr. Odin has a vision to create a family center, which he hopes will more actively engage his parishioners and the local community in their day-to-day -day activities. So he turned to Comerica's faith-based lending program. The bank provides construction loans, mortgages, lines of credit, and equipment loans. Comerica provides loans of up to $10 million, and they service all religious groups. Correspondent Ziamara Galindo has more. Times have truly changed. Churches all over, whatever faith they are, are having to change. They have to because the community's needs are completely different now than they were 30 years ago. Yes. The church of 30 years ago is not the church of, the, of today, or the churches that remain like they were 30 years ago are fairly empty today. And so in order to be relevant, one has to respond to the new demands, the new challenges. And if the church is to be relevant to the communities it serves, it must have responses and answers because frankly, government isn't doing it, the private sector is inadequate in doing it, and the only institution in the African-American community particularly is the church, which is why we take on as our mission and as our vision serving uh, in a far different way than happened 30 years ago. What is your relationship with Comerica Bank? Comerica Bank is a partner with this church. It's been a very forward-looking institution in which we were able to take to them our vision of what we saw the church doing in the 21st century, the church being involved beyond the four walls. We wanted to create, for example, and establish a family life center here in South Los Angeles, a center where we could say to young people, come here and learn what they aren't teaching in school. Come here and get some computer skills. Come here and learn languages other than English. Come here and understand how to become an entrepreneur. Come here and find a safe place where you can have fun and you can play. Those were the visions that we took to our partners at Comerica. So we want to establish that kind of center here and we have a business plan and Comerica Bank has been wonderful in listening to us and saying, we understand your vision, we will work with you. How does Comerica Bank's faith-based initiative assist the temple? Well, in several ways. Number one, we've been able to do a major renovation of our existing facilities. Comerica Bank understood what we were trying to do and they stepped right in in terms of the kinds of uh, financial instruments we needed in order to make that happen. Secondly, as we talked about a three, five, 10, 20 year plan moving to the future in terms of a strategic movement on the part of this congregation, Co-America already had the kind of ears in which they could hear what we were saying and we weren't talking a foreign language to them. A church being involved in business, a church being involved as an entrepreneur, a church being involved in something beyond worship. That was music to their ears, we could talk, we could communicate, we could plan together. That's why we call them our partner. Oftentimes in the past, churches would buy buildings so they could build a larger church. We're not building a larger church building. We're building a, a, a facility that can serve people seven days a week. The wonder, wonderful thing about having a worship center is that it's good for Sundays or good for the Sabbath or for special concerts. But the rest of the time, the building lays empty. We want a building that will be full, will be full with laughter, full with, with smiling faces. And so we're getting that building so that we might do those things to build lives. What is your business plan to pay off a loan and continue the next phase? That's one of the greatest challenges for any church, uh, for any nonprofit institution, because you have to generate revenues based upon the services that you operate. For a church, for the kinds of services that we're looking to provide, there are various sources in which we're looking to get funding streams. Some of them are from city, state, and federal government sources where we are addressing what it is that they would like to see done in the community. So you get grants and get contracts from city, uh, county, and uh, federal 
facilities sec or, or, or resources. Secondly, uh, there are, are foundations that would like to see particular kinds of services provided. You have to compete for them and that's okay, but we would uh, present to them our story, what it is that we are looking to do. And there are foundations uh, throughout California and throughout this nation that want to uh, relate with progressive uh, um, community-based organizations, progressive faith institutions, and support their work. Thirdly, there are individuals that also see our vision. They may not be even members of our church, but they understand what it is we're trying to do, who are, are likely to provide resources, support to what we're doing. Then finally, there's our church community, the persons who are part of Bryan Temple AME Church, who are making sacrifices and making sacrificial contributions to feed and support the vision. So it's through all of those sources. There's no single uh, source for resources. Matter of fact, we have to be extraordinarily creative because if the solutions were already there, other people would be doing them. They aren't because you have to first identify the need, then identify ways of addressing them. That's the business side of what you do. In the context of the temple and the community, how do you define success? Success is one family at a time, one life at a time, one new wonderful story at a time. The African Methodist Episcopal Church has been in existence for 217 years. There are three million members worldwide. The Bryant Temple in Los Angeles has nearly tripled its membership in the past four years, and that makes it one of the fastest growing AME churches in California. Lynette. And coming up next, studio guest Charles E. Shepard of Comerica Bank. He's here to talk about Comerica's supplier diversity program. So stay with us. And you can reach Tammy Martin of Deb Construction at debconstruction.com. You can call Reverend Clyde Oden Jr. at the Bryant Temple AME Church. His phone number, 323-293-6201. And now let's turn things over to Lynette, who's in the studio with Charles Shepard of Comerica Bank. Thanks, Emmett. Charles E. Shepard is the Vice President of Corporate Purchasing for the Western Market at Comerica Bank. And he's here today to talk about Comerica's Supplier Diversity Program. Welcome to Making It. We appreciate you being here with Thank us. Thank you very much. Let's start first with your role in the Comerica Supplier Diversity Program. My role is a, a, dual, is a dual role at Comerica. I am uh, responsible for Supplier Diversity, which covers the Western Market, which is the Arizona, California, uh, Nevada, Washington, Oregon, Shanghai, uh, as well as administering um, uh, seven uh, national contracts. So it keeps you busy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> keeps you busy. Can you talk about the areas of goods and services um, that uh, the bank typically purchases? Well, the, the seven uh, services that I uh, mentioned, of course, uh, you know, are things that we typically uh, contract for. And that is uh, faxes, copiers, promotional items, printing, ergonomic equipment, um, vehicle real alliance um, uh, programs as, as well. Okay. Let's say I'm a minority business owner. Okay, what's my first step in the process to become a Comerica vendor? Well, the first thing is to go to Comerica.com and you'll see that there is a link there to supply diversity, you can put your basic information mm -hmm. in terms of the products and services that you provide. That information then comes to us and then we disseminate that out to the various purchasing um, areas within the company that match. It's always that first step, taking that first step, logging on to the website and checking it out, right? That's exactly right. So what outreach does America, Co-America do to encourage the growth in the minority-owned business community? Well, we do a lot of things. Uh, we work uh, successfully with various ethnic chamber, chamber of commerces like the Black Chamber of Commerce, Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, 
Black Business Association, the Black Expo, and uh, the Asian Pacific American Chambers. Right. And that helps us to identify firms that uh, will match the requirements that we're looking for. So As, you reach out to them first and really kind of give them some public awareness? Yes, we reach out to them because they typically have a database of firms that they know in particular areas that are minority or women-owned businesses, mm -hmm. like the Northern California Supplier Development Councils and so forth, as well as the Southern uh, Supplier Development Council. Right. Let's talk about Comerica's faith-based lending initiative. Okay. We have a long history of working with uh, faith-based organizations, and uh, our primary goal there is to make certain that they understand the options that are available to them when they are looking for building funds, mm -hmm. and typically it's building funds when they're expanding and so forth. Are there some very common mistakes that, um, the fiscal mistakes that you think faith-based organizations make across yes. the board? Yes, I, I, I believe it has to do with primarily the bookkeeping and the, the level of bookkeeping that's necessary for the banks to evaluate are they financially healthy, their membership size, and, and their, basically their average income. So that's something that's fixable. You can fix that. Once you identify the problem, you can go after it, right? That's exactly right. Great. Okay, so let's talk about um, what Comerica's current plans are for expansion. You got some big plans? Oh, yes. <laughs> In the next couple of years, we expect to open up at least uh, 75 new banking centers. Um, 15 of which we've already opened in the southern uh, Los Angeles area. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to continue with that process so we have a real presence in the community. And I want to say that uh, we just opened up the Crenshaw branch mm -hmm. on Crenshaw, and then we're going to open up one in the next month in Irvine. Can you talk about why you're targeting these communities, what your commitment is to these communities? Well, I. I our target, why we're targeting this, we think that there's a lot of um, area for growth mm -hmm. in, in our business. You know, Comerica was a business that bank that traditionally uh, was uh, headquartered in the Michigan area. Now that we're moving to the west, we're looking at how we can be a part of the communities and to grow with the communities because of the opportunities that we see. Right. And, and the various demographics are a great uh, thing. Uh, when right. we're working with the communities, we help the communities grow and they help us to grow. Right, so it's, it's a two-way street and also the supply and demand. There's a huge demand there right now. Oh, yes. Well, fantastic. Absolutely. Great tips. Thank you for being with us. We really appreciate it. Thank you. And uh, coming up, stay tuned for information on how you can contact Charles E. Shepard and Comerica Bank. That's when we return, so stick around. Featuring stories from American small business. Making it is being brought to you by San Diego Gas and Electric. Serving you today, planning for tomorrow. And by The Boeing Company. You can reach Charles E. Shepard of Comerica Bank at ceshepherd at comerica.com or call him 408-556-5151. And the Making It website offers a wealth of resources to entrepreneurs. You can post a picture of yourself and your business or order a copy of today's show. These benefits and more at makingittv.com. And that wraps it up for this edition of Making It. I'm Emmett Miller. And I'm Lynette Romero. Join us next time. Here's a final thought. So every time we can help bring families together, help young people see themselves as something different than a gangster, that every time we can get a young person to see themselves as an engineer, as a scientist, as a teacher, as a preacher, as a police person, every time we can do that is another success story that we can write. We're looking to write thousands of success stories.